Number one, when is the best time to visit? The best time to visit very much depends on what you're looking for. If it's crowds you're concerned with, the least visited times are between December and February. Save holidays. Know that if you come during late December, crowds can be worse than in summer. Other than the holidays, though, visitation is low in winter due to cold and snow. The park service will not use salt to melt road ice, so surfaces can get slippery. Despite this, the canyon can appear breathtaking after a winter snow. In summertime, many families will visit, causing many people to believe that traveling in spring or fall to be ideal. But autumn is just as busy as the summer, though there certainly are less crying infants. <coughs> Number 2. Where is the Glass Skywalk? The Skywalk is on Wallapai tribal land and 250 road miles from the National Park, where many people show up expecting to find it. The Skywalk sits perched over a side canyon of Grand Canyon proper, and therefore offers completely different views than what visitors will encounter along the main south rim. A rather high cost of admission has also soured the experience for some. Grand Canyon West, as the area is called, typically sees tourists from Las Vegas due to its proximity to Nevada. Number 3. How many people fall off? Fatalities vary from year to year, but on average around five or more will fall from the rim, either accidentally or intentionally. Far greater accidents occur from other reasons, such as dehydration from unprepared hikers. In 2016, the park exceeded 6 million visitors for the year, helping to put into perspective the relatively few fatalities that do actually occur. As parks experience record visitor numbers, an emerging problem involving accidents is actually traffic-related. A huge percentage of visitors in rental cars are foreign nationals who may not be familiar with U.S. traffic laws or driving in general. Number 4. How do you get down there? The Bright Angel Trail is typically categorized as the easiest way to and from the Colorado River. This, however, doesn't mean that it is easy to hike to the bottom and back for unprepared hikers. The Bright Angel, like the South Kayabab, is a maintained trail, and because of its proximity to the main village, is the most used. The oases at Indian Garden and Phantom Ranch provide amenities not available on many of the other non-maintained trails. There are also overnight mule rides to the bottom, but you must make reservations for these more than a year in advance. Grand Canyon officially begins at a place called Lee's Ferry, which is accessible by car. It is here where rafters put in for the long journey down the 277 mile long canyon. However, there are no roads to the bottom of the canyon within the park, so don't listen to your car's GPS, it could lead you astray. Number 5. How long does it take to get to the bottom, and do you need permission? The amount of time it takes a hiker to reach the Colorado River and return safely to the rim depends entirely on the hiker and the trail he or she uses. It typically takes an individual twice as long to climb out as it does to go down, and therefore the recommendation is to spend two days. Although some people do this in one day, spending two or more is safer and allows for more time to appreciate the incredible scenery. The mule ride takes about six hours to reach the bottom for an overnight stay at Phantom Ranch. Camping overnight within the canyon requires a fee and backcountry permit that one can obtain at the backcountry office. There is a limited number of permits available, so during prime times of spring and fall, it is best to reserve them in advance. Remember, most hikers seen on the trails are not going all the way to the river, but doing shorter day hikes. 
The rim trail that stretches west of the village paralleling Hermit Road is great for day hikes, as much of it is paved and level. Between March and November, one can also use the free Red Line shuttle bus in conjunction with walking the rim path. Number 6. What about wildlife and dangerous animals? Visitors commonly see elk and deer in the village area that display little fear of people. While the park does have some carnivorous predators, like mountain lions and coyotes, the animal that most people have negative encounters with is the cute little rock squirrel. It is illegal to feed wildlife. Despite many warnings, people are bitten while trying to feed or pet this animal. The park's medical clinic reports that during the summer, they can receive several visits per day from tourists regarding squirrel bites. Number 7. Where are the best places to see sunset and sunrise? Although this can depend on the time of year, the best places to see sunset and sunrise and the canyon itself are away from the main village area. Lookouts on Hermit Road will be the most convenient for those staying in the village without cars. Powell and Hopi points are good for sunrise, while Mojave and Pima are good for sunset. These are all accessible on the Red Line Shuttle March through November when cars are prohibited from Hermit Road. Keep in mind that the free shuttles get very crowded during sunset, so a good alternative is to get tickets for the in-park sunset tour. Otherwise, sunrise is a better time to use the free Red Line bus, since few people are up so early in the morning. If you have your own car, you could also consider driving out Highway 64 East to Lippin Point or Desert View. Number 8. Where's the best place to find souvenirs? Curio shops can be found throughout the village selling typical tourist gifts to expensive native-made art. Shops usually identify which souvenirs are authentic handmade versus cheap replicas made in China. Having verifiable authenticity combined with fees that a concessionaire must pay the park service though means prices can be high for certain items. Park-related educational gifts can be found in the non-profit GCA stores like that at the main visitor center. The best deals on souvenirs will be found at roadside stands on tribal lands bordering the park, especially those found along 64 East on the Navajo Reservation. Number 9. Where is the best lodging and dining? We all know that services like gas, food, and lodging can be expensive in resort areas, and national parks are no exception. Within Grand Canyon National Park there are three restaurants. The finest dining, but potentially the most expensive for dinner, is at El Tavar Hotel. If you want to experience dining there while saving some money, consider going for breakfast instead. Oddly, the price won't be much more than the poorly reviewed cafeteria food found at Maswick or Yavapai Lodges. Don't expect amenities like swimming pools, high-speed Wi-Fi, or an extensive cellular network within the park. A few miles to the south lies the town of Tucson, a park border community with many additional hotels and services. If you're staying in Tucson during the summer, consider taking the free Purple Line shuttle into the park to avoid long lines at the entrance station. If you want a park service sanctioned tour, you can get these inside the park for much less than what Tucson tour operators charge. Number 10. Where does the train go? 
The Grand Canyon Railway provides near daily service from and to Williams, Arizona, 60 miles south of the park. The train provides visitors and train buffs an alternative way to reach the park. But don't expect to see the canyon during your journey. The train arrives around noon, and passengers then have about three hours to visit the rim. The free Blue Line bus can be used to get around the village, and the red and orange lines used to go out onto the rims where there are better views. Keep in mind that the shuttles provide free mass transit, so do expect them to be popular. To avoid having to do things on your own, consider purchasing a guided bus tour when buying your train ticket ahead of time. To enjoy more that the park has to offer, some visitors make plans to stay overnight, then take the train back to Williams the following afternoon. Number 11. What about air tours? Today, most visitors to Grand Canyon will not have to witness noisy aircraft hovering about. The airspace above the most popular vistas remains restricted. However, there are areas where scenic flights are permitted. Popular helicopter tours originate from Grand Canyon Airport, just a few miles south of the National Park. Number 12. What's best to see with a limited amount of time? The average visitor at Grand Canyon stays only two or three hours. This is a mistake as you will most likely only see the canyon from the most visited spots like Mather Point at the Crowded Visitor Center. If possible, stay longer to visit other museums and historic sites. If you have limited time and are passing through the area, consider driving in from the east and exiting from the south, or vice versa. You can avoid congestion this way and still see great views from Grandview, Moran, Lippin, or Desert View. This will work out well for many travelers planning on seeing other monuments and parks on the Colorado Plateau. Number 13. 